this is the new Surface Pro 6. What I want to know is what is it like to draw on? That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Microsoft Surface Line has become so popular and so ubiquitous that it's easy to forget how new Microsoft is to the hardware game. Our little baby hardware maker is now well into its childhood and the whole Surface Line has really taken shape. You've come a long way, kid. This is the fifth Surface product I have had the opportunity to review right here on my YouTube channel. At first, the changes were big, but around the third or fourth generation of the Surface Pro, the design started to settle into place. With this, the 6th generation Pro, the biggest change is really just the color, or at least the new color option. The new black matte finish is absolutely gorgeous. You know you can charge more for colors now, kid. Microsoft only kind of charges more for the black matte version of the Surface Pro 6. What they're doing is not offering it for the base configuration. So you gotta bump up your hard drive size if you wanna get the black version. What you do is in three months you paint it red and you charge another $200 for it. I like that they aren't just charging for the paint job. They obviously wanna signify that the black is the premium version of the device. Advice. This is a good way to do it because you're actually getting real value for the extra money that you're spending. Even if you don't get the new matte black, you're still going to be getting the beautiful 2736 pixel by 1824 pixel screen and the build quality of the Surface Line in general is fantastic. The hinge on the back of this thing is glorious. It's stiff enough to stand up well at any position. The full weight of your hand will push down on it when you're drawing, but it's not just gonna slam down on you. One criticism I've seen of the new Surface Pro is the lack of a USB-C port. I kinda have mixed feelings about this. I do not think that this is a device killer, and I can see the downside of not having it, but it doesn't really bother me that much. In fact, it doesn't bother me at all. As much as I like the idea of USB-C and all the things the reality is is I still don't really have many accessories that take advantage of it USB-C could do everything you could even use it as a power charger maybe as a compromise it'd be kind of nice to see them ditch the mini display port replace that with the USB-C while also keeping the old USB port I don't know but one thing I do know is I still love the magnetic power adapter I recently upgraded my wife's MacBook obviously that only has a USB-C connector that's also used for power connection and, and once you don't have that magnetic connector for your power you really realize how nice it is. We have this beautiful piece of hardware and we have to drive it to Dongleville. Dongleville is incredibly profitable, kid. If you have a really keen eye, you're gonna notice that there is a micro SD card slot tucked away in the back so you can substantially expand the storage on this thing too. As far as battery life goes, it's about the same as last year. They say it has about 13.5 hours of battery life. Realistically, when drawing, I would say you should expect about seven or eight hours. I unplugged it for an afternoon and the battery got down down to about 40 to 45 percent after using it for several hours. Another thing to be aware of is the Surface Pro 6 does not come with a keyboard cover and it does not come with the pen. Those things are going to cost you extra. Good boy, you're learning. And it's something you should factor into your purchasing decision. I love the keyboard covers myself. I know that they are a little bit pricey. You can pair the Surface with any Bluetooth keyboard if you have one handy. I like drawing in Photoshop and having a keyboard nearby for my shortcuts is really handy. I believe it is time to talk about this, the Surface Pen. There are no substantial upgrades to the pen this year. One of the great things about the pen is that it works on a whole array of Surface devices and it's backwards compatible with old Surface devices dating all the way back to the Surface Pro 3. I love that there is no longer any confusion about what stylus is going to work with my device. It's really refreshing, especially since it doesn't actually come with the Surface Pro anymore and you have to buy it separately. Heck, even the keyboard cover I'm using here is from last year's Surface Pro, so the interchangeable of accessories is a big plus in my book. The downside of having the same pen from last year is there really isn't any improvements or changes. I mentioned this in detail in my Surface Go review a few weeks back, and I'll say it again. I still like this pen, but I gotta say, I don't love this pen anymore. I've gotten spoiled by the Apple Pencil and some of the Wacom alternatives I've been using and reviewing right here on this channel. The specs on the pen are good. I mean, we've got 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, 21 milliseconds of latency. It's got tilt support. They added that last year. Nine grams of activation force. That's so much better than it used to be. And the battery on this thing is replaceable and lasts for months, if not years. Unfortunately, numbers don't tell the story about how good a stylus is or is 
isn't. For example, 4,000 levels of pressure is good, but you don't really need that much. I mean, the old Surface Pro 3 pen had far less and it was just fine. The one thing here I don't completely understand is the latency. 21 millisecond sounds great, but that great latency doesn't actually show up when you're drawing. I'm not sure why. Across all the painting apps I tried, there's there's still some lag. Now, I don't I don't want to bag on the lag. <laughs> that one rhymed. Because I don't think the lag is bad or, or a big deal at all. It's just that I would expect if you've got such a great latency number that you would see some improvement there, and, and I don't really see that. The big thing with the Surface Pen is the jitter, and since we haven't seen any changes in the pen, we haven't seen any improvements in that area either. Now, you can see from my test here that it's not bad, but if you're coming for the world of the Apple Pencil or you're used to using a Wacom tablet, you're gonna see it and you're gonna feel it. So here are some of the things that I'm testing for. First, I play with the pressure, checking to see if the pressure is applied equally across the pressure curve, and overall, I think it looks pretty good here. Then I do some line tests, drawing at medium speed and then slow speed lines, mostly angled lines. I'm looking for any kind of wobble or jitter to the line. And then I bust out a ruler to make sure that it's not just my shaking hand that's causing any kind of problems. And overall, the lines are pretty good, and every so often, I get a little jump or a bump. I also like to check fast lines, like quick hatch lines, see if it's giving me any check marks or anything at the back end. And in this area, the Surface Pro has always done pretty well. I will say every so often, out of nowhere while I'm drawing, I get a really ugly line. It just jumps out at me and says, hey buddy, how's it going? I don't know, it's just just weird thing that occasionally happens. It's probably because of the slickness of the screen and I don't have full control of the pen sometimes. Or maybe that's caused by the time I dropped my pen in the punch bowl at the office party. I'm just kidding, that didn't happen. I wasn't invited to the party. Drawing with the Surface Pen is a lot different than other styluses I've used, mainly because of the rubber tip on the end of the stylus. In other videos, I've talked about how I like to use a screen protector on, say, my iPad to give the Apple Pencil some extra friction while I'm drawing. The Surface Pen has a rubbery nib on the top of the pen. It gives it more friction on the glass, but it does feel completely different than anything else I've ever drawn with. And getting used to it feels pretty good, but it takes some time. Now, since this does run Windows 10, it is a full-blown computer, what's the performance like? It's fine. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's not a monster, but it definitely gets the job done. Now, the version I'm testing here has the i5 processor, and, and generally everything runs well. It gets the job done. I get some lag on some of the complex Photoshop brushes, but really, I expected that. That's pretty normal. Other apps are more streamlined. They work a little bit better, and I get better performance out of them. One of the benefits here of the i5 processor version is that it is fanless, so you've got a surface that makes absolutely no noise. None. I like it. Does get warm after a while, but it's not hot, hot. It's just warm. And I'm wearing a glove here just because it makes my hand glide smoother over this slick screen. Now in the past, they sold a low-end version of the Surface Pro with less RAM and a smaller processor, and I'm really glad that the base configuration has bumped it up to an i5 this year. In the past, I've told you guys, don't get the base configuration, go for the next level up, get the more RAM, get the slightly better processor, but now, whichever Surface Pro you get is gonna be good for you. Good job, Microsoft. On to the pros and cons. So what are the pros? Well, first of all, I love the Surface hardware. I love the look of the matte black. I love the way it feels. I love how seamlessly the stand folds into the back of the device. I love the screen itself. I love the way the pen snaps to the side magnetically. I love how easy it is to carry around when you have a type cover. And I love the fact that Microsoft hasn't just gone off and stolen a bunch of designs from Apple. I mean, they may have stolen their design philosophy, but they're not stealing the designs themselves. It's a subtle difference, but it ends up creating great hardware. Now this thing gets compared to the iPad Pro a lot with the Apple Pencil, I think because they look similar. But the big benefit here is that you're running full Windows. I think that's something to really have to take into account. You can run anything on this, all your drawing apps, 3D apps, everything. An iPad isn't necessarily like a laptop replacement, but if you get a Surface Pro, this is an all-in-one. This is the only thing that you're going to need to own. And when we're talking about pros, I think that is really the biggest benefit of this device. Now what are the cons? What are the things that maybe are holding this back a little bit? I don't think there's anything huge really holding this back this year. I like that it's just a little bit of a spec bump. And I will say, if you're used to using an Apple Pencil or a Wacom stylus, this is a step down, and it's a step down you're going to notice, especially if you're doing a lot of inking like I do, you're going to see the pen quality dropping off a bit. For a lot of folks, it's not a big deal. For me, I find that over the last couple years, I have drawn less and less on the surface. And in the end, those are the trade-offs you're going to make. Do you want something that has a better quality pen that is like the highest end pen that you can get 
or do you want a device that kind of does a lot of different things at the same time? You know, it's it's something that you're gonna have to weigh for yourself. So what do you think about the Surface Pro 6? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you're thinking about buying one because you found this review helpful, think about clicking my Amazon link. Uh, it's an affiliate link, so I get a little bit of a kickback, a little bit of commission from that, and that helps support this channel and helps me buy more things. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. I just hit 100,000 subscribers. And it's all thanks to you, because I know I didn't click that button a hundred thousand times. Thanks, guys.